This is for the nerds, this is for the brainiacs, this is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it, man. I know what I know. It reminds me of like when Chalkoff first popped off. Mm -hmm. You know, they just had like these random 1K, 3K events that were just advertised really heavily. I remember Maria Ho was like a big sponsor for Choctaw. Yeah. Uh, a few others. And they just blew prize pools out of the water. You know, just, they just took that Dallas market. They took that Texas market, the Oklahoma market. They just all culminated and would just like pop off for three to five million prize pools. Right. Yeah. Choctaw was a big stop. It was a big stop mm -hmm. for a lot of players that were like trying to make it at the time. It was one of the best stops for them at the time. And, you know, uh, they would play, they would get there early, play some of the, the cash games there too, because, the, you know, they were supposedly pretty good, pretty big, you know. Um, I have a funny story for this. I've only been to Choctaw one time. Uh, it was in 2012, right after I had gone broke. So I went broke in like April of 2012. And I guess this would have been like September, maybe. Um, I had just been, you know, literally accruing debt and living like, uh, month to month, just coaching people, playing a little bit of two five with my coaching women winnings anytime I could, uh, whatever the case may be. And my friend Berto was like, yo, there's this event in Oklahoma. It's too big to miss. I'm going to put you in it. I'm like, okay, man, sounds good. At the time I had like 4k to my name, maybe less. And he's like, all right, the money's in your account, uh, book a flight, book a hotel and and get out there. So I go to book a hotel, whatever. There's nothing in the area. Everything's just sold out because this is 2012 and it's like the first time they ever ran an event. It's just massive. So right. I have to stay in Denton, Texas, which is like, oh my God. It's literally, it just, it just sounds like a place yeah. where it has nothing. Bro, it's, it's a pit stop. I mean, <laughs> that's the best way to describe it, right? So I fly into Dallas, I rent a car, I drive from Dallas airport to Denton, Texas, which is like 30 miles maybe. And then from Denton, it's like another 30 miles to Choctaw. So I'm like, hold up in this like holiday inn, just like self-loathing saying like, you've done this to yourself. You deserve this. <laughs> no, no, uh, no fancy five-star hotels for you anymore. Like you're going to be staying in the roadside inn. And uh, I'm just like, they're ready to grind, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I have my net worth on me at the time. So I go the first day, I play the main event. I lose in like some absurd fashion to like eight, four suited in, I don't know, probably a three bet pot and I'm out and I have one more bullet plus a thousand dollars for a side event. There's like a one K turbo that's supposed to get huge. Yeah. Um, but I have my four K and, uh, I'm good the first day. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to go home. We're going to hit the gym. We're going to prep. Second day I go, same thing, lose my bullet, some absurd way, whatever later in the day this time go home, rinse, repeat, come back for the 1K turbo, play it, and I'm like out immediately. Like literally first card or first hand off the deck, I'm just out. And I'm just like so bummed. And yeah. I walk past the poker room and it's just flooded with people. I mean, flooded. There's just like 37 to five games, yeah. like 10, five, 10. So I do the responsible thing. I'm like, I'm gonna grind out two five with this 4K and I'm gonna like turn this trip into a net win. And I look and the list is like 200 deep. And as I'm about to put my name on it, they call it a new 1025. Oh no! <laughs> I'm like, yeah. like let's let's fucking go, baby. Let's let's do it. So I go and I sit. I go and sit with Case Money because YOLO. And it's funny because nobody knew I was broke. And like you know, at this at this point, I'd been playing for ten years. I'm pretty well known, traveling the the circuit and whatnot. And a lot of the guys in like the 1020 sphere are guys that I play with at all the other stops, like Brigada or whatever. So I recognize like three or four faces. The rest of them are literally just cowboys looking to give it away or whatever the case may be. So I'm like, okay, let's, you know, they don't need to know I'm broke. I'm just going to play my game. I'm going to play good. and every Call a three bet with Jack 10 suited. We catch the queen nine, eight board. Oh, we get in a raise on the flop. We're all in on the turn. I get snapped off by king queen. And at zero percent. No, no, no. The oh. turn was a king. So oh. it's like queen nine eight king. We get it all in, and he just rivers the house. I and I just, I just got to walk. 
<laughs> so I'm just like tucking my tail and like I didn't have I, I didn't have it in me to tell Berto that I just lost all of my money too. Yeah. I was so embarrassed. I just like couldn't possibly bring myself to tell him. I didn't tell him until the following summer after I had won a half a million. Yeah, of course. Like, hey, by the way, uh, last time I went. I, really I'm like, like, yeah, remember remember that nice, generous opportunity you gave me when you sent me to fucking Denton, Texas to humble my ass and I had to go play these tournaments, yada, yada, on a free roll? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, I took my last 4K and I dusted it off in 1045 and I was broke for the next six months. Bro, there's a lot of shit that happens like that. Like sometimes... Like you're, you're, you know, one of our good friends, well, you know, there was a, there was a, a VIP that came into Vegas named Papa and like the games were running crazy. And I remember you were in a game with one of our friends and one of our friends busted and you were like ready to like help him out with a loan. And he just like left one of the best games ever. Right. Like, well, I couldn't help. I had all my money on the table. Right. But you were surprised that he didn't even ask you. Right. There was like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. You were surprised. You're like, oh, why didn't he even ask me for a loan or whatever? And then, like, bro, like, three years later, like, we're having, like, a random conversation. He's like, oh, yeah, well, you guys didn't know is that I was dead broke after that. <laughs> like, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, that makes a lot more sense now because that was a really good game that everybody was trying to get in. I played, yeah, in that game, we were playing 2550, and the regs were just, like, playing way over there. Like, their 510 guys are just playing way too big. And Papa is this amazing human who plays 100% VPIP no matter what. Right. Um, and the game was actually 10:25. Sorry to cut you off. He was playing like, like big baccarat, not normal yeah. baccarat, like huge, huge baccarat for millions. Like, I went to PCA after after this game, and uh, one of the guys I was sitting with in the 25k asked me about Papa and the game, and apparently, like, he's a regular in Macau. And he was just like kind of a nobody who ran it up in Baccarat, bought a sports car, and flew to Vegas. Kind of a legend. Uh, but yeah, like he was V-pipping like 100%. We were actually playing 1025, but we were playing crazy deep. Uh, Papa and I were like 60K effective. And I put the 50 on. And this is how scared the regs were. Uh, I put the 50 on. I had the Jesus seat. Papa was immediately to my right. Uh, I put the 50 on under the gun, and it folded the Papa. Wow. He was like V pipping 100. 100. So he limps. <laughs> he limps, and I check back 6 4, and it comes like uh, Queen 5 3. He checks, I bet he like check raises me huge to like 800. But like we're 60K deep, so like, you know, you're just never folding an open yep. ender. Mm-hmm. I call, turn is the glorious deuce. Wow. And he like bombs. I call, and the river's a brick, and he bets like, I don't know, like 10 into 10 or something like that. And I just rip for like 45 or 50 more. Right. And he just like beats me in with uh, what was like one pair. Wow. He just like had a, a bear queen. I there played like 100, 120K man. pot in a limp hand, in a limp pot. There were some wild stories. There's a famous video that like I've been trying to find for like the last two years or whatever with one of the, I don't want to say who it is because it's like one of the OGs of Vegas, like super OG. Like he's in every 10-20 game at fucking Bellagio every day. You've known him for years. Like he always has a nice shorty on his on his, on his his arm. He's Asian. But anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe he gets it in with Ace-10 suited versus Kings. I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened, but like he was begging. He, he had the best hand on the turn and he was begging to run it twice with Papa. He was like... He's like, I heard this. I heard this. Like twice. I've seen the video actually. Yeah. yeah. And and Papa doesn't. Papa doesn't know. speak in English. Yeah. He's like, what are you talking about? Like 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 let's go, right? And then he's like, two cards. He's like trying to tell him like the next two cards and is, try explaining the next two cards in a split pot like to Papa is not gonna happen. So Papa's like, let's go. And they Papa just drills it, and Papa's like, yes, yes. And it's just like this guy's just devastated because obviously yeah. this pot is like. You're not going to recover from this for the next six months. No matter what game you're in, this is like a huge pop. And it's like, I need that video, man. I'll, if anybody out there has this video, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. 